Hey guys, welcome to this episode. We are going to be taking some of the relics. Remember the episode relic hunting? We're going to actually be embedding relics into a guitar neck. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be really cool. Today's music shout out is Lily May. Look her up. Lily May um, is country music. You're still going to like it. Um, most of our most of the music I listen to is country blues, North Mississippi country blues. So you're going to like this one more time. Lily May, I'll give you a link below. Okay, Lily May. Now, you see how I'm dressed? I'm a country expert today, amongst other things. We're going to get into brain surgery and some other stuff before we get into the topic at hand. Embedding relics in a guitar neck, don't forget. So, how do you like my hat? International Harvester. Why International Harvester? Well, if you need a little tractor uh, to like grade your yard and make sure the drainage is okay and haul a few rocks around International Harvester, find an old one. I'm an expert on tractors. Yeah, you know why? That's right, because I'm from Wisconsin. Hey, check this plate out. Foxy CC. Nick deer, Nick deer. Oh, dude, that was lame. Hey, millimeter, metric hater. Hey, I got some good news for you. One of my more sensitive viewers suggested that rather than me continuing this warfare we have over the metric system. By the way, people in Australia love the metric system and they love me too. That is a fact, Jack. Anyway, she, yeah, I said she. I actually have female viewers, believe that or not, said that... I might approach this more from solving the problem rather than inciting the problem. So, you can tell by the way I'm dressed that I have a medical background and I'm able to competently discuss things like neuroscience. I'm working on neurosurgery. Um, if you could volunteer for that, I'd very much appreciate that. But let's do a quick wardrobe change and I'll tell you my idea. All right, you did a great job, right? Hey, look. Do you see this? This is your brain. See, it says, what's it say? Frontal lobe. Thank you. You're dismissed now. Anyway, frontal lobe, like I said, the frontal lobe is here. So people that understand the value of the metric system, their frontal lobe is here. Now, the metric haters, they don't mean to be metric haters. They don't want to be metric haters. They just are. And the problem is, is that their brain is like this. So the frontal lobe is actually pointing towards East Jesus, Kentucky or someplace like that. That makes it very difficult for them to grasp even the most common of conce concepts. Blah, 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 blah. See what happens when I turn my frontal lobe to the front, my vocabulary completely goes to So now, if you suspect someone's a metric hater, show them a ruler and then tell them that there is millimeters on it. If they start freaking out, you can't do brain surgery, uh, at least until I finish my video on that after I've done my first brain surgery on one of you that comes forward to be the volunteer. Anyway, fast forward now back to reality. If you suspect someone has this condition, you simply turn them. Help me out camera person. Is it, is it, is it say frontal lobe now yes okay so they might look over there but their frontal lobe is lined up now and they will understand the metric system so if you got a metric hater it's kind of your obligation for the betterment of humanity to perform this simple operation more on that surgery later anyway it doesn't even matter if what i said about the speech temporal whatever that you're, I'm paying for it, you learn in school, is right or wrong. This is, a, this is supposed to be funny. This is bagging on metric haters. This is not real, do you get it? Oh, oh, back on, sorry. Hey, listen, don't forget to subscribe, push the like button, um, and that one metric hater out there, I think I just solved your problem, so I should have no dislikes ever. So, um, if you've got a question, subscribe, send it to me, uh, and um, I like your mail. It's the only recognition and probably the only human contact I ever get. So let's hit the bench. Okay, guys, we're still back on this 
vintage white owl box. I have pulled the neck out of it um, and it's ready for matchbooks. Let's do the flyby. It's ready for matchbooks. It's got this graphic of North Mississippi, Holly Springs right in the middle up on top with the 61 highway badge. It's going to be up there. Got some Holly, Holly Springs matchbooks. I'm going to throw a uh, Spaceland LA uh, place. It's now the satellite, but I'm going to put that on there because the artist that this is going to has actually played there. But we got some Holly Springs uh, matchbook copies here. Okay, all fretted, ready for matchbooks. Everything frets the uh, ground down, everything good. Now, what I usually do is put fret markers here for the third fifth seventh and twelfth frets now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this relic wood that I have that I've picked up and we are actually going to embed it in corresponding places on the back of the neck so there's a third the fifth the seventh and the twelfth I'm gonna put a, a buffalo nickel there's what I'm gonna do so let's talk a little bit about the wood you're not going to believe this, but this piece of wood actually came from a tree where Mississippi Fred McDowell was living when Alan Lomax came by and recorded in 1959. So this is a twig off of a tree that was there. This, you saw this in the relic hunting episode, is actually... Uh, was taken from the property where Alan Wilson of Canned Heat, who also helped Sun House relearn how to play his own songs in 1964. This is actually from where Alan Wilson was. And then the prize I've been waiting for for a while. Reuben Lacey, the guy that actually um, Sun House used to preach about how bad he was, but then ultimately took up his guitar playing style uh, Rube Lacey Sunhouse described as using a medicine bottle to make this noise. But anyway, this piece of wood actually came from the church grounds where Reuben Lacey finished out his life as a Baptist preacher. Now, I know you guys probably find that interesting, but I'm not the Discovery Channel, at least not yet. Um, what I want to show you here is I've shown you um, in other episodes, I got this plug cutter. So you take this plug cutter and drill into a piece of wood. Again, this was on the relics, relic hunting episode. And you core through here like so. What ends up coming out is plugs about this size. Now, if you take a small Forstner bit, a quarter inch Forstner bit, you'll see that this fits right in here. So whatever you cut with this, if you drill a hole with this, it will, the plug will drop right down in here. So to fast forward, what I've done here is, here's a plug that I caught from the Mississippi Fred McDowell tree. Here's one from the, remember we used cherry stain? from the Alan Wilson relic. And then I've got, let's get confused here, the plug from the piece of wood near Reuben Lacey's church. So I've cut all of these, sawed them off, and then did this, flattened them out just before my Episode was interrupted by a Los Angeles County Fire Department helicopter. Do you hear it? Salute. Anyway, so I've got three plugs the same size. And I've marked off, I've taken my square, my small square. And I found three, five, seven, and twelve for the frats. Marked them, brought this, marked them up here and then flipped it over to find the center and made marks. Now you remember this neck template gadget? You just as easy set that there. 
take your pencil, make a mark, find the center, and do it like so. Again, it's really handy neck template episode. I'll give you a link right up there if I can remember. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to drill the same depth as there. You see that? I don't want to take my plug in too much deeper, or the hole deeper than I need to. So I'm going to put a piece of flapper tape right there. Just make sure it's right. Take one of these plugs. Look at that. And then I'm just going to wrap this around. So when I drill the holes, when I see the sawdust that I from what I'm drilling spinning off there, I know that I'm at the right depth. So now, before I forget, I don't want to just start drilling on this thing. Of course, I'm going to take my awl and give myself a little. Oh, my line and kugel bottle cap jumped off its normal place. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to need to seek therapy now that something in my world isn't exactly the way I need it to be. Anyway, we've got those little holes there like this. Now we're going to take the tip of this, put it in the hole, and drill down to the flapper. One, two, three. So I'm going to take my file here and knock down the edges like so. I'm going to sand this and get these marks off here and stuff, everything except Tammy's signature. I'm going to knock this down one more time with a light spin on the belt sander. Uh, but we're going to sand. Uh, those are ready now. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this white glue. I usually use tight bond, but this kind of stuff I just put white glue in here put on the bottom like so. And what's gonna happen is when I put the plugs in here, it's gonna push up around the side of the plug and I'm gonna be ready to wipe it off. But I'm gonna take the Mississippi Fred McDowell piece, put it in, then I'm gonna go to the Alan Wilson piece, put it in, and then finally the Reuben Lacey piece. All right, there's Fred, there's Alan. And there is Rube Lacey. Let's make the camera jump. Pop those down a little bit. Now we're going to have a little sand in the do. Let me wipe this up here and get everything the way it needs to be. All right, we're not going to use white glue. We're going to use Duco cement to put the nickel in. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that right there. And then we are going to drop that in like so. And we're going to leave this alone for a bit. Then I'm going to sand over the top of all this, get these marks off, get these nice and shiny. I'll flip it over, put the matchbooks on, get this stuff on, and then I'll give you a quick look. All right, there we go. That's dried up. We got to sand this down to get a few marks of it. Uh, but I'm going to finish this out and detail it um, and give you a clips of what I'm doing along the way. So we're going to put the fret markers in, um, and they go up on the top. And so we're going to go one, two, three, and it drops in right between halfway. There's three, four, five. Come back halfway five six seven come back halfway and then I've got one at the 12th fret so we come back notice that I always put the nickel under the 12th fret that way when your thumb slides down and you've got the slide on your finger you can automatically feel so let's drill these out with a bit like so All right, holes drilled. Put a tad bit of white glue in each one. Like so. Then we use our fret marker material. Push that down. Nip them off. Get the rest. And then that'll be part of the sanding. That'll get knocked out when we do everything.
All right, little quick work on the belt sander. We've got everything, all the marks off, everything sanded. Got the fret markers there. This will all pop a little bit better once I varnish the bottom side of this. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure this is where everybody's fingers are going to run up and down. You don't want that to be rough. You don't need the marks on there. Same thing over here. Just make sure that's nice and smooth. Just like where your frets are. You don't want to be running your frets down and snagging your fingers. So um, there we go. Put a couple matchbooks on here, show you what that looks like quick. Uh, and then we'll get the graphic on up here. Yeah, you know it. All right, that neck turned out pretty good. And let's flip it over and have a look. Get this in the camera range. There they are. Man, them look so nice. They got to be fake. All right, I got a set of closed chrome tuners to put on here, closed gear tuners and uh, a knot and then we'll start putting this thing together but uh, yeah I'm happy with the way this turned out so we're sending this off to wherever it's going with some mojo in here from some people who knew how to play guitar that's for sure all right so is that pretty cool out of some sticks we've got some mojo embedded in the guitar that's going out I'll um We'll see how that looks. I'm not going to reveal who it's going to, but you're going to be happy. This is a, an accomplished guitarist and looking to actually get into some junk blues. Uh, loves North Mississippi, so we'll, we'll see what he does with this, and I'll keep you uh, posted. Anyway, um, what's, what was I going to... Oh, yeah, it was turned the wrong way, so my memory's affected. Anyway, Lily May, get you some Lily May. And don't forget, it's National Metric Haters Month. Do your part. See you next time.